Good morning, it's uh, Jeremy. It's Monday, July the 6th. I'm just down at uh, Toronto Harbour Front near the National Yacht Club. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, measure a sextant altitude. We're going to be looking at celestial navigation basics. And so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, set the time. We have to know the time uh, accurately uh, when we take a sextant reading. The, re the reason for that is that the Earth rotates at 360 degrees. Uh, every 24 hours. That works out to 15 degrees per hour or 15 minutes of arc per 15 minutes or one minute of arc for four seconds. And one minute of arc is one nautical mile. So you want to keep your time accurate to within um, one second. Okay, so what we have here is three things. I've got a Sony shortwave receiver, an ICF 7600, and it's set up right now at a frequency of 7850. And I'm receiving the time signal station from CHU in Ottawa. And it's giving a, a pulsed uh, audio output. And it'll declare itself every one minute. Uh, there's my watch. I'm going to use my watch for my sightings. Okay, and here on my iPhone, I'm just looking at the NIST time. This is the time from the uh, atomic clock down in Boulder, Colorado. So when it hits uh, 1024, we'll hear an announcement and we can see how good my watch is. So it's coming up now. So my watch is right on the second there. So that's what you have to do when you're uh, going to do some section sites. You've got to make sure your clock is accurate. Down at the Toronto Harbour Front, I'm at Trillium Park, and I'm just overlooking uh, Lake Ontario. This is my favorite spot for taking sextant sightings because you have a good view of the lake, and the sun and various bodies, like the moon for instance, are over the lake for quite a period of time. Uh, I'm going to be taking uh, a sextant altitude, to altitude today. We're going to be looking at HSHA, HO, and HC. Those are the various measurements. Uh, for basic celestial navigation and today we're going to be measuring HF, uh, HS which is a sextant altitude. You can get a sextant with an artificial horizon but today I'm just going to use the lake as the horizon. Right now the sun's over the Toronto Island so um, I'll need about another hour for it to move uh, westward and it'll be over the lake so we can take a measurement. Um, I'm going to uh, show you what the sextant looks like in its box, the various things that go with it, what we need to do the measurement. And then I'm going to take um, uh, some measurements with the Osmo camera. I'm going to try and look into the sextant uh, telescope with the camera just to show you how we can bring the uh, zero the sextant and uh, bring the sun down to the horizon. Okay, here. So here's the uh, equipment that we'll be using today. Uh, the box there is a carrying case for the Tamiya 631 sextant. I got that in Singapore in 1982. It's uh, a brass marine sextant. It's uh, pretty rugged, it's survived all these years with no problem. When you get the sextant, it comes with a um, calibration sheet and you need that um, when you're doing the site reduction, you need to know if there's a sextant error. So on my particular model, the 631, uh, the, there is no sextant error. We will have to adjust for the um, zeroing the sextant, so it's usually several minutes on or off the limb. So that's something that uh, we have to adjust for and of course the dip angle. You'll also need a, a book to write your uh, sextant readings in, so I always have a sighting book. I put the date and the time. I also put the weather conditions, whether it's sunny or cloudy, and try and get the temperature and the humidity if I can. Um, you also should have a pen or a couple of pens. Usually uh, Murphy's Law says the pen will run out of ink just when you need it. So those are the things we need. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to see if I can shoot through the sextant uh, telescope with the camera. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do now is I'm going to try and get the Osmo to shoot through the telescope of the sextant and I want to show you how you zero the sextant to determine the index error. So let's see if that works. So what I, I'm adjusting the micrometer drum now. So on the right hand side you see the the uh, sea level, the, the water level rising and then I'm going to lower it till there's a line across. I don't know if that's going to show or not. Now I'm going to lower it the other direction. 
Okay, so what we have to do before we take a section altitude is we have to measure the uh, index error. Now we've determined already that from the manufacturer's data sheet there is no in there is no um, sextant error itself, but we have to determine that the the sextant error is is in manufacturing, so that's zero. But now what we have to do is we have to take the index error, and you have to measure this every time you use the sextant because it might change slightly with weather conditions, uh, metal expands and contracts and everything. So basically, what you do is you take the index arm here. This is the index arm, and you zero it. Okay, so you put it at zero, and then you take the micrometer drum, and then what you do, as we've just seen, looking through the telescope, you look through the telescope of the sextant, and you rotate the micrometer drum so that the sea level appears, or the water level appears level through the sextant. Okay, one part of the, uh, the water level will, will go up and down, and the other will remain constant. So what you have to do is make them the same, the same level. Now, if the reading is, let's say, here it's two, two minutes um, positive. That means it's off the limb, and you'll have to add that to your reading. Why is that? Well, if the reading is off the limb, that means that the angle you measure with your sextant is going to be slightly smaller. Okay, so you have to add that to compensate. Now, if it's this direction, let's say we've got 57 uh, there, then that's on the limb. So that's three minutes on the limb. So that means that your sextant reading will be slightly too big and you have to subtract it. So that's the index error. Now the next thing we're going to do is when the sun appears over the water, right now it's just on the tip of Toronto Island, we'll take a reading. Okay, so what we're looking at here now is we're looking at the sun seen through the telescope of the sextant. Notice as I rock the arm here, okay, there's the sun. Now as I turn the micrometer drum, the idea is to bring the sun down to the water level. Now right now it's over the Toronto Island, so it's not the exact horizon, but it just shows you the idea here. There it is. There's the sun, and we adjust the micrometer drum and bring it down. To okay, so um, we're down at Toronto Harbour Front here, and the sun has just about cleared the uh, west tip of Toronto Island, so I'm going to start to take readings. Uh, one thing we have to do as well is we have to estimate the height of the eye above the water level. Uh, because what happens is your horizon will be slightly lowered as your height of eye goes above the water level. So the angle you measure will be a bit too big. So you have to adjust for that and we'll talk about that later. But right now looking at the water level, I, I stood at the water level and I could see this rock just below me. So I'd say that uh, the height of the water, my height of the eye with the sextant above the water, somewhere between 2.5 to 3 meters. So I'll probably go with about 2.5 to 3 meters. So let's take our first reading. I've got my watch on the inside of my arm here so I can quickly look at the time. Um, the important thing to do is you rock the sextant back and forth to make sure you're at the lowest extremity. I'm going to do a lower limb reading um, and I've got one sunshade on. The reason you do a lower limb reading is you can't estimate where the middle of the sun is because it's too big in the telescope. Uh, the diameter of the sun is about half a degree and the center, the center line of the, the sun to the lower limb is about 15 minutes approximately. You can check that with a nautical almanac. So it's easier to put the bottom of the limb on the, on the water horizon or the top of the limb depending on the clouds. I usually use the bottom uh, than to set this, uh, sight the center. Okay, so we're going to take our first reading and it's almost uh, 3 minutes past 12. So let's take a reading. I'm rocking the sextant to make sure that I'm right on the uh, lower line there. There we go. So it's exactly 12.03. So my measurement was at 12.03. I'll mark that down. 12.03. I measured sixty three degrees. Sixty three degrees ten minutes.